Hello and welcome to Fox 17 Unfiltered. I'm Max Goldwasser. One of the very first stories that we did here on the show actually took place right here at the Grand Rapids Community Archives and Research Center. At that point, we told you all about Beer City USA and how that nickname came to be for Grand Rapids. Well, before that nickname, GR had a different one, one that actually predates the city itself. Here's the story behind Furniture City. So this is one of my favorite pieces in the whole collection, and that's because... It's a trash can. It's an old dingy trash can. <laughs> but it's about the stories that these objects can tell. A waste bin for some, but a portal into the past for the folks at the Grand Rapids Public Museum. Every sports stadium, every bus, every train, every movie theater, those are all made here in Grand Rapids. So, so like when you go to LMCU Ballpark or Comerica Park, you're sitting in something that was made in Grand Rapids? Yep, absolutely. Thousands of objects on the second floor of the city archives, each of them telling a different chapter of the same story, Furniture City. So in Grand Rapids, it was it really was a town that put kind of all of its eggs in that one basket of furniture making. A basket formed by the foundation one man built 14 years before Grand Rapids became an official city. For a lot of people, this, this William Haldane in about 1836 when he came to Grand Rapids is kind of regarded as the father of the furniture city. This is one of the earliest pieces of furniture that was ever made in Grand Rapids that has survived to, to the present day. This is not something that was machine made. This was a one of a kind made by hand chair. GR was just a frontier settlement at that point, a place fur traders, missionaries, and Native Americans saw as their home and Europeans saw as their future. Starting to, to put down some roots and, and build up what would have been a small town of just a few hundred people. The boom started after the Civil War. The furniture industry needed a city with natural resources, people, and access to markets. Grand Rapids had all three. The rivers were how they got their raw materials to the factories. It was also um, an early source of power for the factories. A lot of them ran on electricity, um, that was generated by the fall of the Grand River. As a result, Grand Rapids growth took shape in a way the country had never seen. Something like 30% of the labor in Grand Rapids in the late 1800s, early 1900s, was working in this one industry, and that's really uncommon. Even in you know places that have an identification with a particular product, like Detroit as the Motor City, Detroit was such a bigger city, the percentage of people that were working in automotive is smaller. As the workforce increased, the industry evolved. What was so special about this is the furniture factories in Grand Rapids, they figured out how to make something that looked like this and make it affordable to middle class people. In the Grand Rapids factories, they used, it, it wasn't an assembly line, but they used machinery and they made things in parts and then assembled them all together. So a bed like this, instead of just being carved from like a single giant block of wood, this is a lot of different pieces. Innovation after innovation. A new piece, a new story. This is probably the most well-known piece in the museum's collection. This is a desk that was designed by Frank Lloyd Wright, but he was known for creating these designs that were, for the time, this is from the 1930s, were so outlandish that it was like impossible to actually make. The other fun story about this piece is um, Frank Lloyd Wright designed the chair there to have three legs. <laughs> and so this was before uh, ergonomics, you know, was a thing. And so after uh, about the first couple hours of working in their new desks and chairs, the workers at the, the Johnson Company um, discovered that if you lean back, the chair would tip over. That desk valued at half a million dollars. So why was Alex Forrest so fascinated by that simple trash can? Well, because before that, Michigan's hardwood forests were vanishing, the materials exhausted. So this unassuming treasure symbolizing a transition in the industry. This trash can was actually trying to solve a very specific problem, which was that people would smoke at work in their offices, and then when they would put out their uh, cigars or cigarettes in their wicker waste paper baskets, they would burn down their entire office. And so the metal office furniture company said, you know what, we can solve that problem, we can make a trash can out of metal. No need to quit smoking. Yeah, no, no. We'll find a way for you to do it <laughs> without burning your place down. And what they discovered was that in order for people to buy their metal trash can, they had to make it look like wood. 
So then they had to invent a whole process called artificial wood grain. But once they figured that out, they were really successful. And this company was actually so successful that they changed their name from the Metal Office Furniture Company to the name of this product line, which was Steelcase. So this is actually the first product that Steelcase ever produced. It's called the Victor Waste Basket. Steelcase, one of the few companies that continued to soar, while much of the local industry was hit with a second shock one it couldn't survive. The Roaring Twenties were good to Grand Rapids in the furniture industry. And then of course the Great Depression happens I and mean, kind of brings it all crashing down. Although the industry moved on, Grand Rapids still gives you a glimpse into what it once was. While the Furniture City name has faded, it laid the groundwork for others to take its place. Furniture making really was baked into the early identity of the city and even when that manufacturing left for other places, kind of in the mid 20th century, I think people had a hard time letting go of that, really until a new identity, like some of the things that we've talked about, like Beer City, was there to take its place.